my name is Daniela and welcome to my January wrap up. I am not as accomplished as other booktubers. I am just getting into booktube and into like reading a lot of books. So in the month of January, I read three books, which might not seem like a lot for some of you, but for me, it is an accomplishment. And we're gonna be talking about the three books that I read. I actually read two books and one like graphic novels, comic thingy, which was really small, but it's on Goodreads, so it counts. The first book that I finished in the month of January, which I started in December and it moved into January, is Cutting for Stone by Abraham Burgess. I hope I'm saying that right. It is a story about two twin doctors. They were born under non-ideal circumstances. They were born from a nun and a surgeon and uh, their mother died at childbirth. It says a spoiler or no, nah, it's not, it's on the back. They were, uh, their mother died at childbirth and their father abandoned them. So one of the doctors in the hospital adopted them and it kind of grew up around the medical staff at the hospital in Abras, Ethiopia. And that kind of shaped their lives. We were following one of the twins in particular, being his life uh, of him and his brother through his eyes. This book is not typically what I would pick up. Um, I am into fantasy and romance. This does have a romance element to it. It isn't the main point of the book. Though I must say, I I picked it up to try to read outside of my comfort zone, try to figure out what I actually like and what I don't like. Like I know I like fantasy, romance, enemies to lovers, um, type of stories. So I wanted to know outside of that what I like. I don't read a lot of like non-fiction contemporaries, um, sci-fi and stuff. So I, I'm just gonna, I started picking up random books. This is one of them. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. This is the first book that I picked up in audiobook form. And I really loved the audiobook as well. Don't remember the guy who read it, but he did have an accent. And I love the accents he did for all of the characters, whether it was like the um, the gynecologist woman who adopted the boys, loved the Indian accent that he did for her. I just, just loved his accent, but I gave it three stars because it wasn't really the book for me. I did enjoy it, but I didn't really care about the story and it wasn't even about the story i would say it was about the characters and i loved the characters but at one point i didn't care i didn't care enough there was a there's like a thing in the story and i didn't care enough about it like i didn't care enough about the things that were happening i was just listening and i was like okay this is this is okay um, I'm enjoying this enough to continue it, but I wasn't like absorbed by it. But I know like that it isn't badly written, it isn't a bad story, so I gave it three stars. If it was a fantasy romance that I am familiar with, that I picked up knowing what I wanted from it, and it was, um, if the story wasn't it, the writing wasn't it, I would give it two to one star. But since I picked this up, knowing that I might not like it, but I still enjoyed it, I gave it three stars because I think this is um, a pretty highly rated book. Oh, good rates and I didn't want to ruin the ratings just because I didn't personally enjoy the book. Also really enjoyed the medical terms and the medical scenes in the book. Um, they were explained very simply and I could uh, easily understand them even though I'm not someone who like knows medical terms or understands medical terms. So yeah, this one, three out of 
five stars. Um, would also recommend the audiobook. The next book that I read, I don't actually know if this is the right order in which I read the books, but I'm gonna go with this one next. And this is Outlander by Anna Gableton. And this is a pretty dummy thick book. Like, look at that. I also picked this up because it does have a fantasy and romance element, but not in the way that I'm used to. Also, I picked this book up again get out of my reading comfort zone but I didn't know much about the books I usually do read synopsis of the books on the back just generally know what the book is about but I don't do any heavily heavily research into it because I want to like be surprised by the book itself and I did not think <laughs> I would enjoy this book as much as I did. I was kind of afraid of the writing because um, I knew it was gonna be like lovely ye old Englishy and also ye old Scottish. So I was afraid that like maybe I wouldn't understand or it would be hard to read. But uh, because it's such a thick book, I switched to the audiobook and. Again, I did very much enjoy it. Also, I don't know if it's on the Goodreads page, but this is somewhat smutty. It has sex scenes, which I was not expecting. Um, again, didn't do any research into it, just knew that the main heroine, Claire, gets transported from 1945, I think, like six months after the World War II, to the 17 something, to like, Scotland so I was like okay uh, and I was like okay um I didn't know if it was a romance or if it was like a survival thing but yeah it does go to the romance side and it does even go to the smutty side um I did enjoy all the like the main characters I did, did enjoy the world building um yeah the only reason I think I gave it a four rather than a three like a five is there were just some parts that didn't interest me as much that I just kind of zoned out a little bit um, or some parts that I just wanted to get through quickly because they didn't interest me but all in all I really enjoyed the whole story and I'm, I'm definitely gonna be picking up the sequel and I'm also gonna be doing a fun thing with this and the uh, series that is out the Netflix series of the same name uh, made from the book did I tell you what this book's about <laughs> it's about a man herring Claire um, Randall I have to look what her last name was because in the book she goes by Beecham and later she goes by Fraser or Fraser I don't know how to say it but yeah uh, Claire Randall she was a World War II nurse after the war, her and her husband go to Scotland for their like honeymoon or kind of like after because they were separated, they go like have a little daytime, you know? Well, in Scotland, Claire gets transported to 1743 Scotland and shenanigans ensue. She meets Jamie Fraser, which he is a very charming and handsome scottish young lad yes jamie we stand jamie he is so like this is the first book that i actually think that the main like um like the main hero the love interest isn't a skinny white boy i mean fraser jamie is a white boy he's scottish but he isn't your typical you know prince in chain white armor at least that's not how i envisioned him um that's not how he is written in the book like he's very sweet but also you know kind of that 1743 scottish guy mostly because he is described as best i can tell you a bear like you know a gay bear he is big and burly i don't know if there's a straight definition for that but like big burly bearded um hairy guy which I bought like when they first introduced like the band of Scottish 
guys and they describe them as these like big ass got big ass hairy stinking eyes it seems like what type of love interest could be here but then they like they get to know jamie and you're like my god i want him to uh, crush me <laughs> so yeah definitely this was a definite surprise and yeah watch out for the video i do with this and the tv show and uh gonna be picking up the second book in the series i do have some gripes with it but i think i'm gonna mention them more in the oh, the other video than this video just like know that at the, uh, I just want to know that one, I spoiled myself by reading some Goodreads reviews because I wanted to know like, um, I know that not a lot of people talk about this book on book, book two, maybe because it's an older book. So I wanted to know like, what's, what's the deal? Um, and I read some reviews and I got spoiled. Also, they say it's a rape book, which I wouldn't, I mean, it's 1743 Scotland. Like, what do you expect? If you think, like, yeah, maybe it could have been without it, but I think it's more realistic than exaggerated, like, rape was a thing. It's not, like, the main center point in the book, but it's a thing in, one, the world, two, definitely in the past, it happened more. So I'm just kind of like, okay, she doesn't exaggerate, she doesn't glorify it, it's whatever. Also, at the end of the book, something happens, I don't want to spoil it something because I got spoiled for it. Don't read the Goodreads reviews before going to the end because I I was going like I was almost at the end. It was like, what can I possibly like? There were there there wouldn't be any spoiler that I wouldn't already know, right? So I <laughs> looked at it and um, yeah, I got spoiled. So don't do that. But yeah, at the end something happens to like our main love interest and i wish they would handle how he gets through it differently basically claire does some psychological mumbo jumbo to him which i wish they would they get through it with more like trust and love and building on their their relationship but i guess they just wanted to like pack that up quickly like that part of the story and not well on it but yeah wish that was different maybe i would have given a five if that was different also the longing uh before like before claire gets together with jamie they're just friends but don't really see a longing there like yeah she goes like oh he's hot but she does that with other guys like oh they're good looking so it's not really like I yearn for him, I want for him. That's what I love most about like period romances, the, the yearning, um, because you know, back then they couldn't really do anything about the lust. So the yearning was strong and I really do like the yearning. That's one of the best part about historical romances. Um, and the glances and brushes of the arm and ooh, can you see my can you see my wrist? Ooh, so dainty. So yeah, I wish there was more yearning before they got together. Um, those are my biggest grapes and uh, rope scrapes with the story and the writing. The writing is pretty good actually, but the other story. Uh, and I'm gonna get more into the book, like maybe in detail when I watch the series to it and the last book that i read for the month of january is uh, this one it is a more of a comics than a book and it is avatar of the last airbender team avatar tales it is a collection of short stories like one-offs from a bunch of different artists um i don't know if they actually wrote the stories also or if the stories were pre-written and they just did the art style not really sure but i think this is five stars i will devour anything from the avatar universe i love the avatar universe also want to do a video about the avatar universe it is amazing a great 10 out of 10 beautiful awesome so great so i don't know the meme but yeah um not really much to say about this bunch of short stories 
beautiful art. It's very thin. It has, it doesn't have uh, great reviews on Goodreads. Don't know why. I mean, I got what I wanted out of it. A bunch of like short snippets, short stories, fun adventures from the gang. Wish there was most, more Zuko stuff, but oh well. Yeah, I don't really know what to say about this because there's not much to say. That is all for the books I read in January. Currently, I am reading The Lost Hero by Rick Rodden. Um, it was a bitch to find these books. Like, I wanted them in a collection and the only collection I could find is the hardback one. I wanted them in paperback because this is so unpractically big. I I usually like throw a book in my purse and then pull it out when I um, have the time. So chucking this in my purse is really, really inconvenient. I'm getting through it slowly but surely. The reason that I'm getting through it so slow is because I don't want to switch to audiobook for the Rick Rodden series because I finished the um because i finished the uh percy jackson series like reading it i don't want to switch to listening to this because i already have like i already kind of have like a thought about how the characters sound and their personalities in my own voice please tell me if if this like if, uh, like someone else has this kind of thing where once you start reading like some books you don't want to switch to audiobook I usually don't switch back and forth. I either read the book or listen to the audio. I don't do both, but yeah, I want to read this, so it's gonna take me a little while. Although I'm getting through it pretty quickly. I just have some classes in college they have to concentrate on more than reading right now, so. But I'm gonna devour this series after I have the time for it. So yeah, currently on The Lost Hero and uh, have the rest of the books from the series. So I'm going to be getting through those pretty soon. Thank you so much for watching my January wrap up. Hope to put out more videos. <laughs> what am I doing? Hope to put out more videos in the future and I'll see you next time. Bye.